Coming up on today's show, we'll be going through the big releases of May, including the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, If, Furiosa, and so much more. We'll be talking to the teams behind The Strangers, The Fall Guy, and Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. And we'll be telling you how you can see Danny Boyle classic movies on the big screen again, but more importantly, a Transformers event that's coming up I'm really excited about. <laughs> Welcome to What's On at Cineworld Cinemas. I'm Luke Owen. And I'm Dan Layton. And we are here at the O2 Cineworld Cinemas at the O2 to talk about this month's coming releases. Mm, happy May. It's May time. It's May. It's, it's got to be May. Yeah, we, you got there first. Yeah, I got there first. Of course I did. Do you know what else I'm going to get first? Uh, snacks. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, we'll talk about films. Planet of the Apes. I know. We're going to kick off with a bit of action. To start Fabulous. with, a little bit, uh, The Fall Guy, which mm -hmm. is the new, uh, hot off the success of Barbie. Oh, yeah. And, and his performance at the Oscars. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Gosling is almost like a, a renaissance. A renaissance. It, it, it's, I disagree with you there because Ryan Gosling has never gone away. I, so it can't be an renaissance of any form. I feel like we're in a new era. Well, yeah, but it's just like that, that makes it the next evolution rather than. Ryan Gosling oh, has been. Like, I'm thinking right the way back. Notebook, all the way to now. Ryan Gosling has been ever-present. But it, now is the time when people are sort of like, ah, the new Ryan Gosling movie. That, as, a, yeah. as opposed to just being in that one small demographic into now I think everyone is just excited for new Gosling. Oh, I'm, and, and hard to disagree because yeah. uh, it looks... Uh, this is one that I've, has been on my radar for a while with uh, various like magazine covers, features throughout. Um, Emily Blunt there as yep. well. Long time coming, this movie yeah. as well. It's been in development since 2010. Yeah. It was originally written for The Rock. <laughs> uh, he was going to be the lead star of it because it's an adaptation, loose adaptation, of a, a 1970s mm. um, TV show. And it's about a stunt actor who is working on a movie set and is now looking for his missing... His, the body, the person he is a body double for, yeah. he is looking for him. Yes. Um, the original one, the TV series, was about like stunt actors who double as bounty hunters. Mm -hmm. This has kind of taken a bit more of a uh, comedic aspect to it of mm. this action action star, the stunt double, effectively, yeah. uh, now becoming the action hero. Mm. It looks uh, fun. I know that, that, yeah. that's such a, uh, sometimes that's a damning with faint praise word. I mean it very earnestly. This looks like uh, my perfect sort of like May blockbuster movie, go and see something fun, go and see some big action, have a nice time. Particularly when you see the words, from the director of Bullet Train. That part. You know exactly what you're in for. Exactly. And Bullet Train was, was that yeah. a couple of years ago. So. But don't just take it from us. Check out this junket we did for the movie. Massive. Was there a real life version of your character on set for The Fool Guy? And did you learn any kind of tips and tricks from them whilst you were there? Great question. So our real life Dan Tucker was Chris O'Hara on set. He was the stunts coordinator. And I got to shadow him the whole time Amazing. on set, which was incredible. And it was really great to have that resource, right? To be able to talk yeah. to that person every day. Also to be able to come in to set when I wasn't shooting and just watch how he was. And what I learned was the importance of the stunt coordinator on set. So mm. the way I interacted with stunts in the past was as the actor. Yeah. But being now representing the entire stunts community and seeing how much responsibility they have on set to keep everyone safe, not just the actors or just the other stunt people, yes. but everyone, it was huge. And then also the integrity. Mm. I mean, you can't lie. You have to be very honest. Yeah. Because if you lie, people get hurt. Yeah, if you course. lie about your preparation, someone gets hurt. Someone might not go home. They might die. Mm. Right? Oh so gosh, that's it's a lot of pressure. It's a big, it's big. So yeah. it means that like stunt coordinators have a lot of responsibility and they have to be honest. So that tells me that there's a lot of integrity. I wanted to show how amazing our movie, The Fall Guy, is in 4DX, but they forgot the 4DX chairs. So we brought the Fall Guy stunt oh. team to give you the full 4DX experience. Beautiful idea. Right. Yeah. You guys ready? All right, and action! But if that's not your cup of tea, perhaps you want to go for some cinema. Mm. You want to go for some drama, perhaps. Oh. Uh, not to say that the Fall Guy isn't cinema. cinema. But you can go and see Love Lies Bleeding, which mm -hmm. is the new Christian Stewart drama. This is one I don't know too much about. Um, I'm kind of, uh, you were telling me the sort of synopsis before we started. And I was, I, me, me and Kristen Stewart go way back. 
put in the image. We had, well, actually, I, I wasn't on camera that day, which is a shame because I made a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. But I, I did the junket for Diana, the film Spencer, it was called. I made Kristen Stewart laugh. Did you? <laughs> we had such a nice time. <laughs> no one knows it was me, though, because I wasn't on camera, despite having showered that day. Oh. Um, but yeah, I don't know too much about this one. Uh, so I'm, I'm quite curious. And if that's not your cup of tea, and this is one of the, the great things about this first week of May, mm -hmm. is that you go, I'm going to go watch a fun action movie, I can go watch my drama, or I can take in a little bit of horror. You love it. What if a group of children, or children, adults, I suppose they are really, but you know, them kids. Yeah. What, if, what if those kids messed around with some tarot cards and unleashed some evil spirits from within those cards? So they break the first rule of tarot, which is, or the unspoken rule of tarot, which is that you don't use someone else's deck and they happen to use a cursed deck. You don't want yeah. to do that. Bad news yeah. abounds and scares are plenty, I'd oh, imagine. A, a, abundant from tarot. Yeah, cups. <gasps> Scary cups. Cups? Yeah, swords. Uh, there's some really good horror out this month. Yeah. Um, we'll get into Sting a little bit later mm, on, which, no, is, which is which is no, probably the most anticipated movie of the month. I don't want to talk about it. But I think there's some really good stuff to be found within Tarot as well. Yeah. This, this is kind of like my Friday night movie I want to go see. It's having Tika, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. like having a real, uh, a real breakout kind of moment. Released the following week on May 10th, Perhaps my most anticipated movie of the year, although I feel like I say that every single month because <laughs> it is a really, really great year for cinema. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Big time, big time. I'm a, a massive fan of the uh, recent trilogy. I don't know as much about the originals, though. I was someone who was... Uh, the first Planet of the Apes I came across was the Tim Burton one, mm -hmm. and then of course you the Simpsons. Par well, the Simpsons parody, Doctor Sayers, Doctor Sayers. Um, so this trilogy was my sort of intro, and what a trilogy it was! You know, from the Shakespearean nature of Dawn, the intriguing and and quite momentous original, the Rise of Planet of the Apes, into the war, the scope, the the power of it all and so this one i'm like do you see it is yeah like, it's but a, you are someone who goes right back i am yeah i mean you know, i'm a, I'm a, a sci-fi nerd yeah. of the 1990s so yeah. like i grew up a lot on the original five movies mm. and, and watching them on tv watching them on vhs and stuff so i've got i'm quite a, uh, i've got quite a fondness for the uh the, the planet of the apes franchise so when rise came out I was initially quite trepidatious. Trepidatious, yeah. yeah. I, I did not like the Tim Burton uh, mm. reboot. Um, I don't think Tim Burton likes it that much either. <laughs> um, but I, I was a big, f I was a bit trepidatious going into Rise because I was a kind of like anti remake at that time. I yeah. was anti reboot. I'd kind of had my fill of those, mm. and I didn't want them rebooting something that didn't I felt didn't need to. Mm. But I was a fool because I went in, and what I found was this is a completely new original take on on the source material, and it's created a whole new world for mm. it that then was such a great and it's become one of my favorite movies ever yeah and it led into dawn which is so so spectacular and as you mentioned like it's the scale of war is, is so incredible and now we're into this new chapter quite a few years on from the last time we were in the, the planet mm. of the apes world we've got a new director more or less a whole new cast as well there's almost yeah. like a, a new generation of people coming in it's the director of the the maze runner series mm. who's coming in to help okay. this one from matt reeves so i'm going to be very interested to see his take on this and, and what size and scale he can bring to what is quite a Shakespearean story. What is uh, interesting as a result of all of that is that they are moving it quite far ahead. So it's not a direct continuation of the trilogy that we had had. It's now several, I want to say centuries in the future. I don't know that for sure, but it's, it's, it's way in the future. Uh, the apes have obviously, the civilization of the apes has grown and there are some who have no idea who Caesar was. Mm -hmm. uh, humans are living in a very shadowy environment. There are some who are quite benevolent. There are some uh, apes who are quite, you know, militant in their in their protection of their, you know, colony and stuff. Um, so I'm very interested to see. It feels like not just ah another one of those movies. It feels like the beginning of a new, uh, I guess, a chapter in in the tale. Yeah. And there's and when you when you watch the trailers. 
Wow, it's beautiful. It's so yeah, it looks so so great. What I find is so interesting about this is we were just talking before we started recording. Mm. Um, we were talking about someone in the office, like their favorite, one of their favorite movies ever is War, and yeah. then you were like, "Mine's Dawn." Dawn, and I was like, "Oh, Rise is one of my favorites." Yeah. Like we've individually got like our favorite movies. I, I wonder if Kingdom can find itself within that sort of pantheon of being like, mm. "Oh, actually, you, you speak to a fourth person." Like Kingdom's my favorite. I think it's got a shot at being one of those quiet hits mm -hmm. of the year. But that's enough of me nerding out about this mm. movie. We also got to speak to some of the people behind the film. We thought it'd be really cool to talk to you today about the different ways the audience can see Kingdom of the Planet sure. of the Apes at the cinema. That's fantastic, yeah, that's great. Because we spend a tremendous amount of time on these images and the sound. Yeah. The sound is 50% of the experience. And so um, we take a lot of care in that stuff. So uh, you know, it's, it's important, I think, to watch these movies, and I hope audiences do enjoy them on the biggest screen they can, and also there's the highest quality, the theaters that really care about the presentation. We're back in your town now. We certainly are, because The Strangers Chapter One yeah. is uh, in cinemas on the 17th of May. I, um, I love The Strangers. Uh, the the original one, so a, a kind of a new take on this. Madeline Petsch, mm -hmm. uh, who people might know from Riverdale, uh, is is featured in this one. And The Strangers is one of those movies. Like the poster is something that people really remember yes, about this. I uh, do. The um, and uh, there's a moment from that movie where it's like uh, one of the characters says like Why us? And they just reply Because you were home. Yeah. And it's it's that it's a real like unnerving. Uh, plot and concept for a movie. Mm. So I'm kind of glad that it's back. And yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. Normally all this happens later in the year, but they're peppering horror throughout nowadays. Is I can't get a respite anywhere. <laughs> just trying to hide. <laughs> they're just trying to pepper it in between all the big blockbusters and yeah. like mid-range movies and stuff to be like, here's a horror for Dan, here's a horror for I Dan. I don't want them, I'm scared <laughs> of them. Everyone else can have fun, just leave me alone. Well, thankfully you didn't have to go and do the interviews uh, for the movie, because no. it might have been Perhaps too much of a scaredy. I wouldn't have been able to like do them like justifiably because it mm -hmm. would have been so. The scene where um, my fingers were covering <laughs> the entire screen. What did you think of that? However, we did speak to the cast. To me, this is a film that yes, it is absolutely scary, and I, I hope it scares people. But I want people who are typically you know more trepidatious to touch horror to feel like this is not just like a jump scary, like cheap scare kind of film. Like mm -hmm. this is something that has like some you know real meat to it. I'm a big horror fan though. So I, okay. you know, when I was a kid, I, I kind of made it my mission to watch every horror film on Blockbuster when it was still a thing. And I did complete that by grade nine. Oh, wow. So um, that, yeah, I love horror. <laughs> <laughs> but much like every week that we've had, if that is not your cup of tea, mm -hmm. you could just go down the hall and see something a little bit different. What variety? <laughs> we are eating well, aren't we? John Krasinski's newest yes. movie uh, with Ryan Reynolds, mm -hmm. Steve Carell doing voices. And it, it basically, okay, here's the pitch. What if your imaginary friends were real? So it's interesting because it is not only what if your imaginary friends were real, it's when you move on from your imaginary friend, your if, I-F, you see, it's very clever. They don't go anywhere. Yeah. They just exist. And Ryan Reynolds is sort of like this... I want to say gatekeeper, this like, you know, River Styx, <laughs> imaginary friends. <laughs> um, and then a girl can sort of see them all. And, and it's, it's really interesting when I was watching the trailer for this and thinking about it being John Krasinski's uh, continued adventures as a director, all the conversation of Steve Carell and John Krasinski working together in the office, Steve Carell taking direction from John Krasinski, that's a new dynamic for them kind of thing, it's quite fun. Um, obviously he's had massive success with the Quiet Place movies. Yep. Um, this, this for me is really interesting and maybe you'll n speak to something about this as a dad because I feel like it's maybe my kids are growing up. Mm -hmm. The idea then exists in his head what, about the innocence of youth and then we move on and we leave our youth behind and the imaginary friends being left away um, and we forget about them and what does that mean? I think it's a really interesting position in John Krasinski's life for him to tackle a subject matter like this. Do you know what I mean? I completely understand what you're saying. And I, I, what I love about this, and kind of piggybacking off your point there, is we were talking about this last month. Remember when we did the action season last yeah. month? We were talking about how like you have these high concept mm. action movies. I feel like we're in a, a real renaissance era of the high concept movie. Mm -hmm. Of just like, what if 
blank. Blank. Like I had it with Civil War last yeah. month, this idea of just like, what if this is the world? And mm. now we've got like, what if imaginary friends were uh, real and someone can see them yeah. and what does this mean for the characters and stuff? So I'm re I love that. I, I think love the, these original IPs coming through. I think it just comes from when you're writing a script or coming up with a story and ultimately that's all we're doing here is trying to tell stories. It starts with that little question. It starts yeah. with that nugget and then, and then you follow that thread and you follow that thread and oh, that's actually made me think about this which is going to bring this back together mm -hmm. and where does that question and where do your answers take you? Um, and in the case of If, it looks genuinely delightful. It's got the, the potential to be one of those family movies that ultimately makes the, the, the kids go, Dad, why are you crying? Yeah, like, yeah, You'll yeah. understand in about 10 years. I haven't got with my kid to the imaginary friend phase. Right, yeah. Uh, but she is now in the imaginative play yeah. era, and that is kind of wonderful to see. Mm. It's basically been sparked by Paw Patrol. Like, yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> it's just, she will just tell you which character of Paw Patrol you are uh, and which character <laughs> she is, and then you go and do, you know, reenacting. Yeah. So I feel like we are, like, the next step of that is the imaginary friend. Yeah. So from that aspect, that's why I'm quite excited to go and see yeah. the movie. To pause. It's almost like prepping me yeah. <laughs> for, for what that was. It's revision. Like. Research. <laughs> Released on the 24th of May, George Miller returns to the big screen, once again returning to his Mad Max world, yeah. as he did quite a few years back now with Fury Road. A good 10 years ago. A good ten years yeah. a while ago, wasn't it? It's mm. kind of wild to think. And he's back once again like a renegade master, <laughs> and he's bringing Furiosa her own movie. Yes, remember her is the, uh, the tagline. Fury Road is one of the best films of all time, I think. I don't think it's too high to say. It was a, a, an adrenaline ride from first frame to last. The fact that it got that incredible chromatic release yeah. um, speaks to how much it connected. Films don't get releases like that unless they've connected with you in, in a way. One, obviously, a ton of Oscars as well. Um, and it really is the Godzilla minus one of, uh, well, of its generation. There you go. I mean, also Furiosa uh, and what Charlie's Throne did with that character stuck in the mind in such a way that it, it almost demanded the George Miller have a look at this character and have a look at this um, origin story and play with it and, and see where he was going to end up. Um, I'm a big, big fan of the Mad Max movies. I'm a big fan of, of the character. And I'm a big fan of Annie Taylor-Joy, mm -hmm. who is a, a really fascinating screen presence. I'm thinking a lot at the moment about like movie stars and, and what they bring to the table and who is... What, what a movie star is now. And she's a really fascinating one because she's quite ubiquitous. She's in loads of stuff. And she's got a very unique look. Mm -hmm. She's got a very specific look. But when you think about her in Last Night in Soho or The Menu or The Vivitch or this, she's so uh, different. Mm -hmm. So while you know it's her and while you're drawn to her, she plays with the characters so varied. Um, and I'm, I'm well excited. I'm and, well excited. And I think the beauty of that is that, oh, like I don't, I'm so interested to know what I'm going to get with mm. this Anya Taylor Joy performance. Yeah. You know what you're getting with a George Miller directed right. yeah. movie of this sort of scale. Mm. And Chris Hemsworth is there as well. And I love Chris Hemsworth. You know this about me. So I'm very, uh, it's always like, I like, if Chris Hemsworth makes a choice, I'm here for it. Do you know okay, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's I see, how yeah, I f yeah. I'm like, they don't always work, but when they do, they slap for me. And this one is an example of that. I think there are too many good, um, there, are, there are too many stamps of quality and ticks in this box for me to not have the best day on the 24th of May. But Dan, if that is not your cup of tea, oh my gosh, just head down the hall and you can go watch Garfield back up on the big screen. Do you want some lasagna? Because I do. <laughs> I've been thinking about it all morning. So Garfield is, I mean, perhaps a, a, a truly iconic character yes. of, of modern pop culture. I would say. Someone who has gone from like almost strength to strength, really, and is just like it keeps getting rebooted every now and again. Mm. It's been a while since we've had a Garfield movie, but just putting Garfield up, you know exactly the character. That lazy little cat who likes pasta. I mean, absolutely. You know. But the, it's a whole new spin on the character. We're finding out about his dad, who's voiced by uh, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> you know, Garfield, voiced by Chris Pratt, goes on a wacky adventure mm. with Odie. And look, I haven't seen the movie, but I would expect 
some pasta to be consumed. Oh yeah, lots of lasagna. And probably some hating on Mondays. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's a mood, isn't it? <laughs> We're filming, the children we're filming this on a Monday. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we, we totally understand you, Garfield. And then lastly, for our new releases this month, I know a movie that you are anticipating with all of your limbs. Am I allowed to leave? Don't. <laughs> don't even. I, I know what you're doing. Am I allowed to leave while you do this one? Because it's a bit much for me. Is it a little bit? You're going to walk out of frame? Do you know what my, you know my big fear? Do I know your big fear? Read the okay. synopsis. And I, I wanted know. to save this because like our crew here don't really know much about this movie, but it's called Sting. So I wanted to, I wanted to read the synopsis uh, for everyone here. Uh, I'm actually going to combine two of the synopsis on um, IMDb. One cold, stormy night in New York City, a mysterious object falls from a sky, oh. falls from the sky and smashes through the window of a rundown apartment building. In it is an egg, and from this egg emerges a strange little spider. After raising an unnervingly talented spider in secret, 12-year-old 12, 12 Charlotte must face the facts about her pet and fight for her family's survival when the once charming creature rapidly transforms into a giant flesh-eating monster. Yes, please. It, I, I feel like it's on me. I feel like I can, I can just like see, I, oh, I, don't, I don't like spiders. Spiders are my big, Big, like, hard out no. Me too. I was but... genuinely worried on the way in that we were going to be forced to react to a trailer for this <laughs> and I was going to leave because I can't do it. Me too, bud. But do you know what movie I absolutely love? Eight Legged Freaks. Oh, you're a weirdo. <laughs> so, this is like a more serious take on Eight Legged Freaks. I don't want it. I am so excited for this movie. I'm so excited I'm... for you and you at home and all of you. Oh, I hope the cinemas are packed I because then gonna... I don't have to sit there and watch the spiders. I am going to be like unnerved the entire time because I do not like being some spiders. Having a kid, here's something you have to do when you're a kid pretend not to be scared of spiders so you don't pass on your fear to your kid. But I do have, oh. like, I, they make, they give me the heebie jeebies. <sighs> and I am so looking forward to getting massive heebie jeebies from this massive spider up on a massive screen. You're so weird. <laughs> But we've got our usual event cinema with the 2024 Royal Ballet Live's performance of Carmen on Wednesday the 1st and Ray Fiennes in Macbeth on Sunday the 5th. The National Theatre Live's production of Nye will be broadcast on Thursday the 9th and Sunday the 12th along with the grand final of Eurovision Live on Saturday the 11th. Crikey, I bet you that'll be a fun time. Uh, the 2024 Met Opera Live's performance of Madama Butterfly is also on that same day, Saturday the 11th, and the National Theatre Live's performance of Vanya will be on Monday the 13th. Help, I Sexted My Boss Live will be on <laughs> Tuesday the 14th, along with 42nd Street The Musical on Thursday the 16th and Sunday the 19th. Very excited for that. There's also more ballet with the 2024 Royal Ballet Live's performance of The Winter's Tale on Wednesday the 22nd. And lastly, Message in a Bottle will be on Thursday the 30th. But speaking of events, mm. Cineworld have been doing great work uh, with their event cinema they've been doing recently. Seasons. And seasons. We had yes. our action season last month. We did. And this month, we have Danny Boyle season. Eminent premier talent of this country, Danny we, Boyle. We are bringing four of his classic movies back to the big screen, including Sunshine on Tuesday the 7th, Shallow Grave on Tuesday the 14th, 28 Days Later on Tuesday 21st, and Train Spotting on Tuesday 28th. Choose the movies. Huh? See what I did there? Oh, I see what, yeah, absolutely. Choose you did, life. yeah. Because Train Spotting was a, yeah. a transformative movie for me but it was. Uh, when I saw it as Perfect a teenager. Time for you. It was. When I saw it as a teenager for the first time, I was blown mm. away by it. To the point where, here's a fun little uh, bit of Luke Law for you. <laughs> uh, when I was doing my A level um, English literature, uh, I had to write my dissertation around uh, books about the First World War. So I was given all oh, about war. I was given like Empire of the Sun and Birdsong, mm -hmm. which means it must be in World War II, uh, to, to read and do my critique of. But I found Birdsong to be a bit boring. Uh, so I asked my teacher if I could change the curriculum. Oh. Because I wanted to write about train spotting, the, yeah. the book, and do it about the, uh, uh, the, the representation of heroin addicts in literature. So I did oh, that in a go. book called Candy. 
Yes. And, and they had to go to like the English school curriculum to see if this was okay for me to do. And they said it was fine. Well, there you go. So it shows initiative. It did. And so I basically just wrote up because I was obsessed with train spotting. I, yeah. I was amazed with this movie, which then led into when 28 Days Later coming out. Oh my God. I was so excited because it was the another new Danny Boyle movie for me to like really sink my teeth into. Uh, you know me in horror movies. Mm -hmm. 28 Days Later is a rare exception where I watch it over and over again. Uh, here's some fun trivia for you all at home. 28 Days Later is currently not available to stream, nor it is available to rent or buy online digital platforms. And the Blu-rays are in very scarce production. So it is almost impossible to get hold of. So you should come to the movies to see 28 Days Later because it is just one of the most iconic... Uh, fascinating examples of British filmmaking, mm -hmm. where it's like, it looks like it was made for both a hundred million dollars and 50p. Do you know what I mean? Like, I always Absolutely. think of that shot of him walking across Westminster Bridge, um, which is, it, it has the energy of like, wow, that's a massive production, walking around this empty London and having lived here for so long, it's never that empty, not even at four in the morning. I used to work in Trafalgar Square um, at a bookshop and I'd get there literally at like half six, seven, still busy. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's something so alien about it. And then the, the, the concept, the performances, all of them that kind of, there's, there's sat in the, the, the offy essentially with lit by um, fridges that have fallen over, which has such a, a grimy, of its era energy that is just so electric. And even to this day, even with all of the, you know, Shaun of the Deads of yeah, the yeah. world, but zombie movies are plenty that we've seen. So many, it's fed into the language of that and still sticks out like, this is a special one. Absolutely. Go yeah. and see it at the pictures, man. And like you speak Shaun of the Dead, we celebrated its 20th anniversary yeah. uh, recently. That is, you know, has a lot of its uh, DNA within the result of 28 Days mm -hmm. Later because it's, it, is, it is not a zombie movie because zombie movies weren't being made exactly, at that period yeah. of time. But it kind of almost kick-started a, a new um, sort of passion for zombie movies, which was then really kind of hammered home by Shaun of the Dead. Mm. And Shaun of the Dead kind of started this whole new zombie boom that kind of you know, went through all of the, the 2010s. Even brought George Romero back to the big screen. Well, because obviously they're not like zombies, are they? They're yeah, not even exactly. dead, really, I suppose. It's, it's more they're, they're of a, the infected. Yeah, exactly. But and, and people sort of said it, but exactly, that's it. It's the yeah. language. People said, oh, no, but they are. It is a zombie movie. Yeah. But it isn't. Yeah. But it kind of like, it's DNA that is within. Uh, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. I think you can trace back to 28 Days Later. And hey, Killian Murphy, new Academy Award winning actor, right there. And also, Sunshine's great. There you go. Danny Boyle, mate. <laughs> Sunshine, massively underrated is Sunshine. Yeah. Speaking of anniversaries, can you believe it has been 25 years since the release of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace? I struggle to figure that one out and piece <laughs> that all together. I remember going to see that like it was yesterday. Uh, but we are showing that on the big screen from the 3rd of May with an autism-friendly screening on Sunday the 5th. And if you're in the mood for some anniversaries, we have a few other ones. We have Transformers, the 40th anniversary event, which is going to be on Wednesday the 15th, Saturday the 18th, and Sunday the 19th. And for me, one of my favourites of all time, a movie that I have watched so often and could watch time and time again, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the 20th anniversary, can you believe, from the 31st of May. That is a movie I can taste. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, there is a shot in Prisoner of Azkaban where um, Aunt Marge is floating away. This is very early on, so it's not spoilers. Also, it's been 20 years. Um, and I can taste... Pick and mix strawberries. Anytime I watch it, wherever I see that that particular shot, it's the pick and mix strawberry energy. I love this film so much, so I'm very excited to I see doubt. it. I've had enough of your nerd nonsense. Like, <laughs> let me talk to you about the Transformers 40th anniversary event. Let's talk about some. And that's actual, all the time we let's have. Some, let's talk about some actual <laughs> cinema because what's great about this is that this isn't cinema. What the 40th anniversary event is, is the TV show, the original mm. iconic 1984 TV show, the first four episodes being shown on the big screen Huge. with a cast reading 
of the script. So like a lot of the cast and surviving cast members coming back and reading through the script mm. and you get to watch like the first four episodes, which I, sometimes I can do word for word and like I know it back, back to front, like more than meets the eye part one and two, like I know like the back of my hand. Mm. I am so, so excited for this. I might actually go to all three of them. Like all three you. of the, the dates that it's on for because I'm stoked that this is on the big screen. Yeah. Because when they advertised this, I was like, ah, that'll only be in the States. That sounds like such a US <laughs> celebration thing. No, no, we're getting it in the UK. Mm. I'm so, so excited for this. But this is, I mean, this is what these event movies are all about. These are what these anniversary re-releases are all about. It's not necessarily, it's, it's partly you are a new viewer who never got the opportunity to see them on the big screen or in this case, celebrate them like that. But it's partly because Prisoner of Azkaban's coming out. I'm gonna go see that. I'm gonna go see that the day it comes back out because it's such a joyous experience to relive these movies in this environment, mm -hmm. you know? But I'm afraid that's all we've got time for on this edition of What's On at Cineworld Cinemas. You can check out any of the movies that we've discussed today and book your tickets using the links in the video description down below. And if you're a fan of this sort of thing, you can also get it in the audio realms by visiting anywhere you get your podcast from. But until next month, I've been Luke Owen. And I've been Dan Lane. And that's What's On. <laughs>